Uh, my name's Emma Viskich and I'm an author. Yes, so Those Who Perish <laughs> is, I, I guess at its heart, a story about family and redemption. It can be read as a standalone, but it's actually the fourth novel in my Caleb Zellick series, uh, featuring, I'd say, a very classic outsider private detective, Caleb, who is profoundly deaf. Um, uh, after some really hard years, um, very grim years, things are going well for Caleb. He's reunited with his wife, Kat, who is very soon to have a baby. But he receives an anonymous message saying that his estranged brother, Ant, is in peril. A man has been killed and Anton might be next. So Caleb rushes to his aid at the, I'm going to say, very fictional Muttonbird Island off the west coast of Victoria. And things rapidly go downhill from there. No, it's not my first book. Um, Those Who Perish is my fourth novel. Uh, I'd say my fourth published novel. I did write a couple of practice novels uh, uh, along the way uh, before I, um, my very first book, Resurrection Bay, was published. So Those Who Perish is the finale in this series for Caleb. There might be another series a little way down the track, but um, at the moment it's very much the um, end piece of, of the, the series with Caleb. The novels are published by Echo Publishing uh, under Bonnier Australia. So the, the inspiration for the whole series and Caleb, I guess the, the shortest answer is my murky subconscious. <laughs> so uh, Caleb has been appearing in my writing ever since primary school um, in different forms. My very first published short story uh, was, was published in the education uh, magazine Pursuit, uh, which was about a, a blind man. And, and then I've got lots of stories about outsiders who are invisible or mute or all sorts of things. So this is where we, we start saying that it's a theme, not therapy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Caleb, I think I can trace back to when my grandparents came to live with us when I was, I guess, seven or eight. And they were Croatian immigrants. They did not speak English at all. I did not speak Croatian at all. So we had that real... Uh, inability to communicate and I could see how happy they were in their enclave but how isolated they were in the rest of the world and I guess the outsider theme is also because I was a very odd child uh, and had a lot of trouble making sense of the rules of the world and um, yeah just just understanding how society fitted in so Caleb has been this character that's just been developing the whole the whole my whole writing life I guess and then he he strutted onto the page in the form of a private investigator, which works really well for me as a crime writer because uh, it can make his life very, very tense because he doesn't know who's creeping up behind him and he misreads lips and you're never quite sure if he's on the right track or not. So thank you, Caleb. <laughs> I'm a full-time author and I also work part-time. <laughs> Uh, full time in that, I look. I write seven days a week. I write evenings. I write nights. I write days. Um, but I also do still do a little bit of uh, teaching of writing. But mainly also, I teach clarinet as well. So my lucky dip question: Do you have any writing rituals? Uh, wow, that's a really interesting one. I don't think you could call it rituals so much as just me rocking back and forth, going, "Oh my god, I can't do it. I can't do it." and then making myself sit down and do it. That, that's pretty much it. So nobody sees my early drafts. Um, they don't make sense, really. The, the way I don't write lin linearly, um, there are random scenes that I'm writing towards. I often have these really strong scenes that I, I know need to be in the book. And so a lot of the writing process is about me finding my way there and making sense. And then I have to rewrite. So it's not until everything is pretty much ready to be almost printed that uh, my lucky uh, partner he gets to to read them now he didn't in my early early novels um, and then my my publisher and editor uh, the wonderful Kate Goldsworthy helps me get everything to the next level and just makes everything deeper and and better but those early words nobody reads <laughs> So my novels are definitely crime fiction, uh, but they don't quite fit down the middle of straight commercial crime fiction in that they're very 
character driven, even though there's a lot of plot in them. Um, I very much think of the plot as being the, the vehicle that's getting us to really interesting places. And I'm, I'm particularly interested in the characters who are sitting in the car with me and they're, they're the people I really want to go on that journey with. So yes, plot driven, but very character. So they sit somewhere on the crime spectrum. I've always been a writer. I started writing when I could read, so about four. I've got stories all the way back to then and very much based on whatever I was reading at the time. So we've got the bad Enid Blyton phase, the bad Greek myths phase, the bad uh, John le Carre phase with terrible English accents in the dialogue, despite the fact I've never been to England in my life. Um, so writing has always been a core part of me, but it didn't occur to me I could be an author until I was about 30 or so. I'd, I'd been working as a, uh, a classical musician for, for many, many years. And um, I was really missing writing regularly. So I sat down and went, okay, I'm gonna try and write a book. And, and I wrote a whole first draft of a, of a novel and it was terrible, but I loved every second of it. And so that's when I, I decided I was going to really focus on it and, and make it my career. I dread being at a stage in the book where I don't know how I'm going to get myself out of the mess I have written myself into. That's also the best part of the novel writing as well. So I don't pre-plot. I have ideas that I'm working towards, um, scenes that I think, oh, that's fantastic. I really want to know what happens next or how Caleb got him into himself into this terrible uh, situation. But I don't know often who the murderer is or why they've killed someone or who the dead person is. I have no idea. And that's, I'm really excited about that. But it can lead to these terrible situations where I think, do I have to delete 80,000 words and start again? Uh, so that is, it, it's, it's, it's a really cold dread moment when that happens. So my second lucky dip question, are you a night owl or an early bird? Um, I'm laughing because I think my family can answer this one. I am a night owl. Um, I go to bed, well, I'm trying to get myself to go to bed earlier. I'm a like two o'clock in the morning, go to bed sort of person. That doesn't really fit with the rest of the world. So I am trying to get it earlier. It's, it's, I do function really well at night though. I, I do my best writing at 11, 12 o'clock at night and, and yeah, then you don't go to sleep. <laughs> I have to read. I'm always reading. Uh, there are definitely times in the writing process where I can't read fiction though. Uh, so I've learned to read um, either non-fiction or, or short essays are, are great or, or I'll read somebody like Rachel Cusk who may be classified as fiction but it's, it's that very non-fiction feel. So definitely when I'm at the end stages of editing I have to make sure that I'm not, I'm not writing anything that I feel is going to drag me away from my book and maybe in the very first pages of writing a new novel I need to steer clear of uh, heavily, heavily plot um, driven novels because I, I don't want to go in the wrong direction because of what I'm reading. My tips for would-be writers or people who've been writing for a while and are just trying to get to the next stage, I mean, there's the obvious, just keep writing. Uh, nothing you write is ever wasted. Um, so my first career was as a classical musician. I still teach clarinet. Uh, and I, I see people get really frustrated because they're beginners and they're not where they want to be. But every single time you practice, whether it's writing or playing an instrument, you are getting better. So don't ever feel that you're not getting anywhere. Just keep going and know that you're getting better with everything you do. At the moment, I am reading Evie Wilde's uh, The Bass Rock, which I had avoided reading while I was writing Those Who Perish because Those Who Perish is set on a windswept, isolated, island, very claustrophobic uh, island. And the Bass Rock is also involves an isolated island. So I'm, I'm really enjoying getting into it. I loved her, all the birds singing. So I'm really keen to see where, where she goes with this novel. Lucky dip question. If you weren't a writer, what would you be? <laughs> well, I'd probably still be a classical musician, um, which I loved doing. But I think temperamentally I'm way more suited to be a writer because with performance it's on and then it's finished. But with a writer I get to edit 
Uh, I love the editing process, but also you get to fix everything as, as you do it. So uh, yeah, I think I'd still be a musician. So the, the process of getting inside Caleb's head was really interesting. Um, I think the best writing always comes from empathy. So for me, it's about me imagining I am that character. I'm not ever looking at them. Uh, so I, I very much was trying to imagine life being profoundly deaf. And then I had to do the research to see whether I was correct, um, whatever I missed, because you, you don't know what you don't know. So I did a lip reading course to begin with um, and thought I was very, very clever and put little foam earbuds in my ears and went out and got wrong orders in cafes, uh, got lost because I couldn't understand directions, caught wrong trains because I couldn't uh, understand announcements and discovered I was terrible at lip reading. <laughs> uh, and, and it really showed me how hard lip reading really is. Um, and then I, I had thought all along that I might like Kayla to be able to use Auslan, Australian Sign Language, but I wasn't quite sure. So I signed up initially to do a short uh, course of Auslan and I knew immediately he had to sign. It showed, it gave, it, it showed him um, a piece in the world. When, when he's signing, he's comfortable. But more than that, it gave me the ability to show how close other char characters are to him. So the people who love him, sign with him. They might be terrible signers. Um, his, his old uh, business partner, Frankie, um, is an atrocious signer. Very convenient for me because I can put all my mistakes into her signing, uh, but she tries. His wife, Kat, has learned Auslan um, because she understands the importance of belonging and being at peace with your part place in the world. So um, after that first course, I did a very deep dive. I'm still learning Auslan. Um, I can't say I'm fluent, but um, I'm getting getting better all the time. And at least I know when I'm doing things wrong now. <laughs> Next for me is a very, very different novel. Um, I guess it'll still be classified as crime because it definitely is uh, based on a crime. It's historical. I don't want to say too much about it, but it is um, also inspired by a, a, a real historical and family event, a, a, a crime. And it's been in my head for a very long time. So I'm, I'm getting, getting to know the new character and really enjoying it. Sorry. My pleasure. Thanks. Thanks.